Hello everyone. My name is Gal from Bar Ilan University and the purpose of this video is to give information about the final project I carried out over the past year. The project deals with the biophysics of ion channels in neurons and is led by Professor Korengren, head of the Brain Research Program in Bar Ilan University. Our goal was to find numerical values of time constants that affect the rate of action potential generation in neurons. In order to be able to better understand the goals of the project, the difficulty we faced, and our solution to those difficulties, we will begin with a brief biological background that will provide us with an introduction to the topic. The equation we see here is Ohm's law. Ohm's law relates the current voltage and the resistance in such a way that the voltage is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. In our case, the voltage is defined to be the membrane voltage. The current is the ionic current that flows into the cells from the outside to the inside and vice versa. And the resistance is defined to be the membrane resistance as part of being composed of fatty lipid layer and therefore not permeable to the direct passage of the ions. So Ohm's law defined a certain relationship between the voltage and the current. The way this relationship is relates to the action potential is that the ionic current entering from the outside to the inside of the cell leads to generation of the action potential. The action potential moves along the axon until it reaches the terminal button, causing the entry of calcium ions that binds into vesicles of neurotransmitter that are released into the intersynaptic space to the next cell. It's important to say that action potentials will not always be created and most of the time the system will be in a state of equilibrium. In the picture, we can see ions outside the cell and ions inside the cell. Two forces are applied to these ions that keep the system in equilibrium, an electrical force and a chemical force. The electrical force is a result of ions being electrically charged and therefore obeying to cool on slope. And the chemical force is dictated by the concentration of the ions on both sides of the membrane. The equation that unites these two forces is the Nernst equation and is the equation that dictates the Nernst potential for the ions in such a way that the Nernst potential is defined as the membrane voltage at which the ion is in equilibrium. Our project relied on an experiment by two British researchers named Hodgkin and Axley and their goal was to find numerical values that affect the rate of generation of action potentials in squids. These experiments led them to receive a Nobel Prize a few years later. In the experiment, they fixed the membrane voltage and measured the ionic current obtained as a result of fixing the voltage. First, they set the voltage to minus 80 millivolts, change it to 0 millivolts, and then back to minus 80 millivolts. What they discovered is a negative current that enters from outside the cell to the inside of the cell, accompanied by a positive ion current from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. After that, it's become clear to them that the negative current is a current of sodium ions and the positive current is a current of potassium ions. In order to confirm the conclusion, they removed the sodium ions from the solution and received only positive ionic current of potassium. The next thing they did was to repeat the experiment for a wider set of voltages to get the plot we see here. In this plot, each line represents a voltage in a way that the y-axis value represents the current values measured by Hodgkin and Axley in the voltage clamp experiment. After analyzing the results, they created a model that its goal is to estimate the ionic current based on the voltages, conductivities, and other parameters. In our project, we only focused on the potassium ions, so for the sake of simplicity, I'll focus only on them in the explanation. We can see that the potassium channels can be in one of two states, open or closed. The transition from closed mode to open mode is using the alpha time constant. The transition from open mode to closed mode is using the beta time constant. Alpha and beta are the time constant of the reactions, and they consist of numerical value that we wanted to find for it. Here we can see the set of the equations we worked with. We can see that we have expressed the conductivity for a certain point in time and a certain voltage using constants that consisting of alpha and beta values. It can also be seen that alpha and beta consist of numerical values. Alpha consists of four numerical values 
and beta consists of three numerical values. Also, the exponent is also a numerical value that we took into account in our optimizations. So after talking about the biological background for the project, we'll now talk about the data itself. Our data came from Channelpedia, and it describes voltage clamp experiments as we discussed. We can see that the data represent arm currents for a wide set of voltages, ranging from minus 90 millivolts to 80 millivolts. Among the samples we worked with, there are good samples that show relatively clean values alongside noisy and dirty samples that do not reflect a reliable picture of reality. The way we knew how to separate the good samples from the bad samples is by calculating the average between the two adjacent points under the assumption that the expectancy of slopes in a situation where the data is clean is minimal. Here we can see how our data was represented in terms of metrics. Each column represents a different voltage. Each row represents a different moment in time. And the value we see inside the cell is the values of the currents measured by Channelpedia. So just now, when we talked about the data, we talked about it in terms of current values. But in practice, as we presented earlier, we worked with conductivity values. For this, we had to convert the current values to conductivity values. On the top left corner, we can see the raw data represents a current as we got from Channelpedia. Then, we subtracted the values of the electromotive force, which is defined as the voltage minus the Nernst potential of potassium. Then, we calculated the membrane leakage value using linear regression and subtracted it from the conductivity for each point. The last thing we did was normalize the conductivity values to get a graph in the upper right corner. So in fact, we can look at the set of the equations as a black box or a machine that given any moment in time and a voltage knows how to generate conductivity value using the set of equation and the numerical values it has. As will be detailed later, we will use the method in order to generate data for sanity check in order to evaluate the nature of our model. The model we choose to find numerical values is a genetic algorithm model. A genetic algorithm is based on biological principles in the way that we first create population of possible solutions, in our case, random numerical values. Through the execution and the iterations of the genetic algorithm, there are changes in the random numerical values resulting from mutations and crossovers in such a way that only the fittest individuals continue to the next generation. After several iterations, the algorithm converts and provides the relevant solution for us for the numerical values. To make sure that our genetic algorithm provides reliable results, we perform the sanity check for the known numerical values. We created data using the machine we talked about earlier, which consists of sets of equations and the known numerical values. What we got is the data that can be seen in the center of the slide. We then augmented the data by taking standard deviations from the original data's distribution and adding it into the generated sample. In doing so, we received 10 different samples, which we divided into 8 samples for train and 2 samples for test. After that, the data went to a handler that launched 500 genetic algorithms. We took the best results and averaged them to get 8 numerical values. These values were compared to the test values. The results of the comparison of the data that was generated based on the values we found by the genetic algorithm against the test values can be seen in this picture. In blue, we can see the data that was generated based on the numerical value found by the genetic algorithm, and in orange, the sample of the test. It can be seen that the results are very close so we concluded that the genetic algorithm is a model that may be suitable for the problem. Statistically, we can see good correlations between the numerical values among themselves as a function of the changes between the different runs. Based on the correlation map, there is a strong correlation between the numerical values of the alpha time constants and between themselves and between the numerical values of the beta time constants and between themselves. 
It can also be seen that for numerical values obtained from a different runs, the distribution is approximately normal with a small standard deviations. After we performed the sanity check, we wanted to run the genetic algorithm model on the channel padded data as well. Channel padded data consists of several types of channels, so we had to write a piece of code to separate the data based on the types of channels. Then, for each channel's type, we converted the current values to conductivity values. Then, we sorted out the clean cells from the noisy cells by measuring the slope between two adjacent points. We then trained CNN model for binary classification in order to differentiate between different types of channels behaviors for different cases. Lastly, as we described earlier, we ran many genetic algorithms for each cell type and for each channel type to obtain parameters. For the best runs for each channel type, we averaged the parameter values generated data and compared it to channel pedia data. On the right side, we can see the numerical values found after the genetic algorithms running on the channel pedia's data. We can see that they have the same order of magnitude as the original parameters, but are different in the value itself. In the plot, we can see the graph of the conductivity values between the data we created based on the numerical values we found against the data of channel pedia. The values do not overlap and yet give a similar description of the reality. This is the moment we have reached so far in the project and from here we expect to move forward in the future. Thank you very much for watching and expressing interest in the project. For further questions you can contact me at the email that appears here. Thank you.